The Moose Light is the latest 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro, and today we'll be taking a look at the specs, setup, and using the 3D scanner along with the software to scan objects. Okay, let's start with a few quick specs. The Moose Light 3D scanner is a compact, lightweight 3D scanner that weighs in at 250 grams. And it has the ability to capture objects with a 0.05mm accuracy and a 0.1mm resolution. There's no need for markers, and it has good tracking with its single capture range of 200 by 100 millimeters. With scanning speeds of up to 10 frames per second, it can quickly scan medium-sized objects from 15 to 1500 millimeters. And all the captured data can be exported in the most widely used 3D file formats, OBJ, STL, and PLY. The scanner comes well packaged, and inside the box we can find a lanyard that can be attached to the scanner, there's three different power adapters for the power supply, a small screw that attaches to the bottom of the scanner, we have the scanner's data cable which is approximately 2 metres in length, a power supply with a USB-C port, and the outlets for the power supply attach and click into place. And finally we have the Moose Light scanner. The scanner module feels well built, and its compact lightweight size can be used for 3D scanning in either handheld or use with a tripod. There's also optional accessories available to help you get better scan results like the mini tripod that opens and attaches to the bottom of the scanner for tabletop use. And this can be used to scan items along with a textured round turntable top with a motorised turntable base. The setup of the scanner is super easy and at the back there's a USB-C port connecting the data cable and the included right angle USB-C cable just plugs into the back and it sits nicely within the cutout of the back of the scanner. At the other end of the cable we have two connections, a USB-C and a normal USB. The USB-C connects into the back of the power supply and the other USB cable plugs into a computer. Now if you have the mini tripod, this screws into the bottom of the 3D scanner for easy tabletop scanning. The tripod legs open up for it to be placed onto a desk, and it can further extend to suit the scanning needs. The optional turntable base is motorised, and it's used to rotate a small object. There's a micro USB cable which plugs into the side port. Then the textured turntable top sits on top of the base. The unit is powered from a USB port on a PC, or it can also be powered from your own USB power supply. With the scanner set up, next is to install the software. The latest JM Studio application is used to capture, edit and process the scanned data. On the left side are basic tools for viewing, object selection, transform and external mapping. At the top there are two scanning modes to select from. Easy Scan, which is used for handheld scanning of 15 to 1500mm sized objects, or Table Scan, which is used with the motorised turntable base for 15 to 300mm sized objects. For the rest of the basic operation in the software, we'll look at these functions during the test scans. Now, for scanning darker objects and transparent objects, it's best to use a developer or powder spray. This will help dull the surface and allow for the 3D scanner to capture the scan data and details. This special treatment for shiny, metal and transparent objects is required, otherwise they are essentially invisible to the scanner. A light coat of the spray is all that is needed before scanning the object. Preparation is the key to good scans, so it's recommended to use a developer or powder spray for improved scan quality. This is especially important with shiny, metal or transparent objects. For the first test scan, we're scanning a small coffee cup in handheld easy scan mode. During the preview, we may need to adjust the brightness slider and select the scan type from either geometry or texture. And the other thing to check is the scanner's distance to the object shown on the wave monitor is within range. Now we can click on scan, and during this time it will capture many individual points on the surface and map them in a 3D space. At this stage we'll have the top of the model scanned, but missing the underside. We can complete a second scan by clicking append. The object is flipped over and scan is clicked to capture the second side.
The next step is to remove the turntable plate from the scan data and clean up any of the excess noise with the selection tool and by pressing delete on the keyboard. With both scans complete, we can click on Align. The scans will be automatically aligned within the software, but parts can also be manually aligned if needed. Once the line is clicked, we have a successfully aligned part. The next step is to process the scan data points into a mesh. We just need the two scan files selected and click on Apply. From here, we can clean up any noise particles, repair or simplify the model. The model can now be exported and saved as an OBJ, PLY or STL. Then it's ready to slice and 3D print, or used in CAD software to modify the mesh or to create parametric models. The 3D scan of the coffee cup turned out well and it was a quick and easy process. The software is easy to navigate and user friendly and it makes completing the scans a breeze. The next scan is of a concrete pot and again we're using the scanner in easy scan mode with manually turning the turntable plate. Using the scanner in handheld allows us to move around and to capture more detail on the inside of the pot. Scanning speed is fairly quick and easy with steady movements and I found the tracking to work really well. With the scan complete, the turntable base is selected and removed. From here we can click on process to turn the model into a mesh. There's a few noise spots around the model and these can be fixed with the Remove Noise tool. The holes are then filled automatically with a repair function which will fill all the holes on the model. Or you can always take additional scans to cover these areas. The file is now ready to be exported as an OBJ, PLY or STL. Overall for a quick test scan, the scanner captured an excellent and impressive model of the concrete pot and it proves to be a versatile and handy tool for capturing objects. For the final test scan we're using a black race boot. A total of two scans are completed on the top side and one of the underside of the race boot to capture all angles. The scans are quickly cleaned up within the software and manually aligned by selecting three surface points. We've got another nice clean 3D model which was easy to capture and it looks good. The Moose Lite 3D Scanner performs well and with the software it can produce 3D models of parts where you're looking to reverse engineer an item or to design and customise a part. Overall it's a compact and easy to use device that's capable of producing useful and good quality 3D scans.